Good morning and welcome to this Good Friday Communion service at St Thomas Baptist Church. It's very different that I'm in a church of my own and um, we would normally be celebrating communion together. But in these days, it's meeting with the Lord that's of most importance. So let's pray together before we do anything else. Heavenly Father, we would pray that today you would draw very near to us. Lord, we want to thank you for this day, a day that we can remember the, the great sacrifice your son made for our redemption, that we might be ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. And Father, today we pray that as we meet together, you will presence yourself with us and you'll help us to draw attention and to bring glory and honour honor to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour, for we ask it in his name. Amen. When it comes to the cross, I wonder what your thoughts about the cross are. I, I wonder what springs to your mind. Do you use words of a hymn to help you think of the cross? Would you recite words like this on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross? It's the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and blessed, best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Do we use the words of another hymn, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died? The cross today on Good Friday stands and looms large. It's because of the cross that you and I can be forgiven. It's because of the cross of Jesus Christ, that we have hope. Billy Graham was asked once if he could go back and talk to a, a younger version of himself. What advice would he be, give the young preacher? He was an old man at this stage. Billy Graham said, if I could go back and speak to a younger version of myself, I would tell him to preach more on the cross and to make much more of the blood. It's the cross is of vital importance. Let me read you the words of Dr. William Evans. The cross is the magnet that sends the electric current through the telegraph between heaven and earth and makes both testaments thrill through the ages of the past and the future with living, harmonious and saving truth. Jesus was lifted up, connecting God and fallen man. The cross is where we find life. And the cross was always God's plan A. God didn't have a plan B. The book of Revelation tells us in Revelation 13 verse 8, all the inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast and all whose names were not written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. It was always God's plan that the cross would be in our history, would be in the history of mankind. Because of the cross, we would find life. Dr. Warren Wearsby has said, the cross was a divine assignment, not a human accident. It was a God-given obligation, not a human option. The cross was always God's plan of saving you and me. And the cross wasn't just God's plan, the cross was God's platform from which the gospel would reach out to all the world. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, says, for I received that I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What's important, what sets the whole thing in motion is the death of Christ for our sins. And because of the cross this morning, you and I are ransomed. The penalty of our sin, the debt of our sin has been paid because of Christ. 
the Apostle Peter put it like this. 1 Peter 1. For you know not that God paid a ransom to save you from your empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. Because Christ's blood was shed, because his body was broken, we are ransomed. Because of the cross, we are pardoned. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. For what reason? People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who had sinned in past times. That's Paul to the church in Rome in Romans 3, verse 25. Because of the cross, I'm ransomed. Because of the cross, I'm pardoned. Because of the cross, I'm reconciled to God. I'm brought into a right relationship with a holy and just God. Romans 5, verse 10. For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through what? Through the death of his son. That's what the cross means. Upon a life, I did not live. Upon a death, I did not die. Upon another's death, another's life, I risk my soul's eternity. I'm ransomed, I'm pardoned, I'm reconciled, I'm made right with God because of the cross. And the cross is the answer to all of our needs and the world's needs today. He is the atoning sacrifice for sin. Not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world, writes John in 1 John 1, 1 John 2. William Bruth was the founder of the Salvation Army. He said, friends, Jesus shed his precious blood to pay the price of salvation. And bought enough from God, enough salvation to go around. The world's needs are met at the cross. Our needs are met at the cross. Romans 5 verse 6. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and he died for us sinners. This all-inclusive, all-comprehensive, far-reaching death of Christ on the cross is what we're here to remember this morning. Is what we're here to celebrate this morning. But on Easter Sunday morning, we're going to celebrate something just as wonderful. The fact not that Jesus just died, but the fact that Jesus rose again. Religion that rejects the cross is both impotent and ignorant. And that's the truth. The Apostle Paul says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. And this morning we're simply going to take time, a short time. In your homes, I want you to pause. I want you to pause the pastor. It's the only time I'm going to let you do that. I want you to pause and I want you to pray. I want you to find some bread. I want you to find some wine or something similar in your home. I want you to participate with me and partake with me virtually this morning. As we stop and we remember and we thank the Lord for his love for you and me. You see, when we come to communion, this is not just a ritual we do. When we come to communion, what we're doing is we're fulfilling scripture. We're obeying scripture. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord that which I passed unto you. 
that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For that which I have received from the Lord, I pass on to you. This wasn't some second hand thing. This is what the Lord instructed Paul to do. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, before the nails, before the mocking, before the beating, before the scourging, the pain had already started. The hurt had already come. He had been betrayed. He knew what was coming. And he took the bread. And he broke it. This is my body. The bread doesn't become the literal body of Jesus. It's a picture. It's a symbol for us. It reminds us of the, what Jesus was willing to go through. To reconcile you. To redeem you. To ransom you. To make you right with himself. So he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And I want you to get some bread today. And I want you to pause this. And I want you to eat the bread. And I want you to stop. And I want you to thank God for Jesus. We're going to sing a song together that really reflects what Stephen's been talking about, um, which is when I survey uh, the wondrous cross. And when we're doing this, let's try and really, um, I suppose, feel the, the weight of, of what Jesus was doing on the cross and the fact that he was doing that for us. He was doing that in willing obedience uh, to his father's will, um, which is a will to bring us back into a relationship with himself. So let's sing this song together as we reflect on the crucifixion. This Good Friday.
Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the man of the cross. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our body that was broken. We thank you for the hurt and for the pain you were willing to go through. We want to thank you that you were willing to take our sin upon yourself, that we might know what it is to be free. We pray this morning as we break bread together, that you'll help us to find a new appreciation for the cross of Christ and for the body broken on our behalf. Amen. Dr. Alan Redpath says the communion table is a memorial of the past, a reminder of the cross and the centrality of its message, a recognition that there the Lord Jesus was thankful for the privilege that he was dying for sinners just like you and me. He took bread and ate it. Then he took the cup. This is the new covenant. You see, the Bible had taught without the shedding of blood there could be no forgiveness. It was Passover. The disciples were celebrating Passover with Jesus. They remembered the day and the hour when in Egypt God set his people free. And how did he do it? He passed over. Judgment passed his people by when the blood went in the doorposts and the lintel of the homes. A lamb shed its blood to rescue, to protect, to save a people. Now the Lamb of God was about to shed his blood once and for all. That you and I might be saved, rescued. That God's right divine judgment might pass us by. And that we might be made right with him. My body broken. My blood shed. And we continue to do this as God instructed Paul. Do this in remembrance of me. Because we forget so easily. We let other things fill our mind and occupy our hearts. But today, stop. Break bread. Remember the Lord's death. And remember the Lord's death until he comes. One day Jesus will return. One day we will not need to do this ever again. One day we will see him face to face. I trust as you're listening today, you're ready for that day. Actually, if you read on in 1 Corinthians 11, as Paul institutes communion, he says this, before you do it, before you eat the bread, you drink the cup, examine yourself. Make sure you don't eat and drink unworthily. May I ask you to stop and ask the Lord to search your heart. If there's sin there that needs repenting of it, repent of it. If you need to get down on your knees and seek God, seek him. The wonderful thing is this, If you knock, he'll open. If you ask, he'll answer. If you come to him, he'll come to you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Came knowingly, willingly knowing the, what the cross would mean, knowing that you, were, that you would have to suffer and that you would die, 
knowing that all the sin would be poured onto your perfect sinless body. Willing to leave heaven's glory. Willing to die on a tree. Willing to forgive our transgressions. Willing to save the likes of me. And Father, we pray that today you'll draw us to the cross. You'll help us to worship at the cross. You'll help us to come with hearts full of gratitude for all that Jesus accomplished on our behalf at the cross. And Lord, today, may we meet together around the cross of Christ and worship and glorify you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. I trust that today I would encourage you to read the account of the cross and prepare your hearts for the glorious Easter Sunday when we remember the Lord's wonderful resurrection.